Indian households own around 2400 metric tons of gold, which is approximately 11% of the total global deposits. Gold has been of utmost importance to Indians and Indian culture, and many festivals like Akshay Tritya and Dhanteras are celebrated around it. With such a huge craze and importance of gold, jewellery has undoubtedly been a huge business in India since centuries. Earlier, like a family doctor, each family used to have a family jeweller. And with an intent to capitalize this craze of gold and jewellery, Titan Industries launched the first ever jewellery brand named Tanishk in 1995. Till then, the Indian jewellery market was mostly unorganized with a few recognized names like Tribhuvan Das, Bhimji Javeri and Mehrasans. Thus, carving a brand out of this unorganized market wasn't easy for Tanisk. After a few years of launch, Tanisk was at the verge of shutdown. So in this episode, we'll be understanding the turnaround story of Tanisk and would also try to interpret the consumer behavior in the jewellery market. Also in the final segment of the episode, we'll be addressing the core and most important part, that is, how Tanisk is trying to alter the consumer buying behavior with its brand Mia. But the question is, will Tanisk be successful in this attempt? Watch it till the end. So ladies and gentlemen, the story dates back to 1995 when Titan has achieved a stupendous success in the watchmaking. And not just did they replace the market leader HMT that is Hindustan Machine Tools, but also altered the consumer behavior from using mechanical watches to quartz watches. And with the same intent, Tanishq introduced 18 karat gold jewelry. At that time, a 22 karat variant was more popular among Indians. But the 18 karat had two main benefits over the 22 karat variant. First, it was scratch proof and second, the lower price. And owing to the scratch-proof quality, people can wear the jewellery more and due to the low price, people would have budgets to buy more and more. Moreover, to differentiate themselves from the traditional Indian offerings, the designs of Tanesh were heavily inspired from contemporary European brands. But to the surprise, guys, this attempt to alter the consumer behavior backfired Tanisk in such a way that in five years of its launch, the brand was standing at a humongous loss of 150 crores. And in 2001, the share of Titan Industries, the parent company of Tanisk, plunged to just rupees two. At that time, the consultancy giant McKinsey suggested Tata's to shut down the jewelry arm of Titan. But Ratan Tata left the final decision to the then chairman of Titan Industries, Zaxis Desai and Zerxes Desai refused to give up on the business. And ladies and gentlemen, with this, a new struggle kicked off to rebuild Tanishq. The market proposition was redeveloped and after a detailed study of the consumer behavior, Tanishq noticed a major flaw in the model, which was not understanding the consumer needs. Unlike European culture, in India, jewelry is not just bought for an ornamental purposes, but also seen as an investment. In that case, 22 karat gold is more pure as compared to the 18 karat variant. And thus considering and realizing all such factors, Tanisk finally introduced the 22 karat variant. But despite these changes, the main challenge for Tanisk was still the dependency of Indian consumers on their family jewelers. And the only reason for this was trust. Gold is a thing that is very much vulnerable to impurities. Thus people stick only to their family jewelers or jewelers from whom they have been buying for decades. But Tanisk noticed that these jewelers used to sell impure gold. Probably in a 22 karat gold jewellery, 19 to 20 karat of gold was present and rest impurities. And then came the major breakthrough in the journey of Tanishq, which changed the game forever. Tanishq introduced and set up carat meters in their stores, where customers can come and get the purity of the gold tested for free. To explain a bit about the carat meter, it is a device which checks the purity of the gold with the help of x-rays. Thus with this, the people got a reality check and their blind faith over their family jewellers started dwindling. However, the surprising thing was, nothing much changed even after that. People used to come, get their jewellery checked and went out of the shop lambasting and abusing their jewellers. Though the footfalls in the shop increased, the sales didn't. So what do you guys think went wrong? The main problem here was, Tanis did give a reality check to the customers and sold the problem with their jewellery and jeweller. But Tanis didn't provide any solutions to it. And after this realization, Tanis launched the legendary 19 equals 22 offer. And this offer, ladies and gentlemen, changed the entire landscape of Tanis. As per 19 equals 22 offer, people could bring their gold jewellery and test it on the carat meter. If the purity of the jewellery was lower than 22 carat and higher than 19 carat, it could be exchanged for Tanis 22 carat jewellery of their choice by paying only the manufacturing charges. And Tanis could bear the entire cost of the gold. After this offer, there was no looking back for Tanish, and this substantially grew the trust of the consumers over the brand Tanish. With all such strategies in place, today Tanish has crossed 350 stores landmark across 200 cities in India with a turnover of 7,500 crores. Also with passing time, Tanish has launched several other sub-brands like Riva, 
with a focus on wedding related jewelries avir is the first line of products for men and the most important mia mia is highly focused towards its target segment of working women previously heavy durable gold jewelry were preferred by women which yielded enough to manage a financial need if mortgaged or sold but today's young working women are more financially aware and look at jewelry as a style statement and a means of self expression also as per the professional norms heavy jewelry doesn't go well in the office and this is the exact set of people which mia is targeting with its brand currently this segment of course may comprise of a small percentage of jewelry buyers in india but mia's intention was to sell more by selling to the fewer I repeat Mia's intention was to sell more by selling to the fewer and we can't ignore the fact that this current small population of professional women is rising substantially but the main question here is how Mia is trying to alter the consumer buying behavior in India before getting into that let's just first understand the pricing and product specification of Mia Mia sells minimalistic and stylish jewelry in an affordable price range of 4000 to 30000 rupees also mostly 14 karat gold is used in the making And recently Mia announced a change in their policy strategically to change the consumer buying behavior according to which they would be selling jewelry at a fixed prices and will not disclose the weight or breakup of making charges or anything considering the fact that gold jewelry purchase is considered more of a serious purchase and factors like weight making charges etc are calculated compared and bargained upon Thus this might seem a bit weird and illogical in the Indian scenario but this is not new if we take a glance at the international jewelry purchase trends in the western markets the gold purity lies mostly in the range of 9 to 15 carats and the main focus out there is the design also to achieve such complex and intricate designs gold with lesser purity mixed with metals have to be used for strength now the question is is the indian market really ready for this shift probably it was not in 1995 but considering the low and affordable price of mia's collection and design appeal of its jewelries this might be doable in the target segment which mia is focusing on since the professional women nowadays are more conscious about the style statement are hyper busy and are financially stable so this concept might fit in their lifestyle so ladies and gentlemen what do you think can this strategy of tanis change the entire paradigm of buying jewelry for indians though this would be too soon to predict but it would be very much interesting to see how it will span out in future So that's all for today's episode on Indian jewelry market and Tanish case study please like the video and subscribe this channel for more such business content